I learned how to bake these easy chicken thighs when I was about seven years old. They take only a couple minutes of active cooking time, and they're a great source of cheap protein if you're a meat eater. You'll usually buy chicken in a pack at the supermarket like this. I recommend chicken thighs because they're the tastiest part of the chicken, they're nearly impossible to overcook, and they're almost always the cheapest. Please buy bone-in thighs with skin. They're much cheaper and much tastier too. Honestly, the most challenging part about cooking chicken, if you've never cooked chicken before, is dealing with cross-contamination. This is raw meat, and you can get sick if you eat it or if you eat anything that's come into contact with it. So you need to be aware that anything the raw chicken has touched is contaminated and will need to be cleaned, cooked, or thrown away. The scissors I'm using to cut open the chicken package, for example, are now contaminated. They will go straight into the sink where I will spray them with a bleach water solution before washing them later. I want to always keep one hand clean, so I use my left hand to touch anything the raw chicken has touched, and I keep my right hand clean and dry so I can use it to touch things like my camera or tripod or the oven dial, which I'm going to set to 350 degrees. Note that anything my dirty hand touches will be contaminated, so be careful. You will need something to cook your chicken in. Anything oven safe will do. You can use a cake pan or a pie tin, a casserole dish, or an actual roasting pan like this if you have one. This is a great option if you're going to bake many chicken thighs at once. I, however, usually use a good old cast iron skillet because I only cook one to two thighs at a time. I use either a fork or kitchen tongs to transfer my chicken thighs into my cooking vessel. Keep in mind that this fork is now contaminated and will need to go directly into the sink when I'm done with it. Season both sides of the chicken thighs any way you wish, and for the love of God, keep the skin on. It will keep the chicken juicy and delicious. Here I'm using curry spices, but just salt and pepper will do if that's all you have. I like to press the spices against the chicken gently with my fork so they'll stick. Now, while the oven is preheating, let's go over how to deal with extra raw chicken. If you don't want to deal with leftover raw chicken, just bake all your chicken thighs at once and throw away the packaging. You can reheat leftover chicken in the microwave or the oven, or you can just eat it cold. It will keep up to five days in a sealed container in the fridge. If you want to save the raw chicken for later so you can bake it fresh, and I don't blame you if you do, it does taste better this way, transfer the rest of the chicken into a sealable container and keep it in the fridge up until the sell-by date that was on your chicken package. You might want to make yourself a little note in your calendar or something to make sure you remember. If you can't eat all the chicken on time, you can freeze chicken thighs by wrapping them in foil like this. Place one to two thighs in the center of a sheet of foil, and with clean hands, bring two ends together and roll until it's tight against the chicken. Then roll the other two sides of the foil package inward. Write chicken thighs, or something like that, in Sharpie on the package and put it in the freezer. This will keep up to six months, and you can write a date on the foil so you'll be sure to use it on time. To be on the safe side, it's always a good idea to clean your kitchen countertop with a bleach water solution or with soap after you put the raw chicken away. Now back to the chicken. All you do is stick the chicken thighs into a 350 degree oven and bake for 40 minutes. They should be done in 35 minutes, but I always do 40 just in case. It's really hard to overcook chicken thighs, which is another reason why I love them. If you have an instant read thermometer, you can check to see that they're 185 degrees Fahrenheit away from the bone, but if you don't have a thermometer, just cut into a thigh. If the juices are clear, it's done. If the juices are pink, it needs more cooking. And if you're ever in doubt, cook them more. And that's it! I like to eat my chicken thighs with rice and peas, and I either use the chicken drippings to season the rice or I add a little pat of butter. This has been one of my go-to meals ever since I was seven years old. It's fast and easy to make, it's cheap, and it's really tasty too. Check the video description for a full written recipe and a link to a video on how to make rice. And if you want more easy recipes like this, check out the rest of my easy gentle cooking playlist. And thank you to my patrons for helping me produce this series with a special thanks to Chrissy, Britt, Honey Badgers, Megan M, Matthew, Jenny D, Robert Z, Mercedes, Jocelyn, Manila, Gina F, Megan B, Data Fox, Stacy, Gina S, Ruth, Katie, Lonesome Screams, Mihir, Veda, Morgan, Vidfafo, Britta, and Slawek.